Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be running you through this beat I made, and I'm going to be explaining what things are, and um, yeah, that's I'm just going to explain how to go through it, um, what everything is in every little area, from here to here, up here, everything, and I'm going to um, give a little feedback on what I think we should incorporate, and what I think we should stay away from, because... Some of these things are very complicated for new users and considering our audience is beginner producers or people that want to get into this, I think it is smart to not have everything that this DAW has. This is a professional music production digital audio workshop. This is Calvin Harris uses this. Uh, countless other artists use Logic Pro as well, but Calvin Harris is the one I can name off the top of my head. Um, and it's something for people who are pretty experienced in what they do and most of our people are not very experienced so right now I'm gonna play this beat and um, I'm going to after I play the beat I'm just gonna go through what things are and um, how I got to where I did with it So everything on this side of the screen over here, where you can see the grid lines, these are all regions. Regions have already been played. Regions are already here. This is basically where you would find the input. This is all of these notes that I have right here are being played, and the output shows up over here. Now the green ones are MIDI regions and the blue ones are audio regions. Uh, for the most part, I use blue and audio regions for like drum sounds besides hi-hats and 808s. And the only reason I do hi-hats and 808s in MIDI is because once the hi-hats get a little more complicated, it's just much easier to be able to draw in these little things versus having to copy and paste these a hundred million times. And um, the more complicated stuff sounds more like this. And um, for 808s, the reason I use the sampler is because, well, I prefer, <coughs> I prefer to use um, sampler for 808s because 808s uh, are very melodic even though they have more of a drum connotation to them and it's just easier for me to look at it on a piano and play the right notes when I tune it correctly and it just makes everything a little bit easier. And um, all of these sounds are just special effects drums and all of these are most of the melodic and this is where the volume actually gets played. This is an input. This is where the output is. This is where you're going to see the volume of everything. This is where you're going to be able to edit the effects for every instrument over here. Or if I opened up the um, mixer window, you could open it by clicking this or by pressing the X button on your keyboard. And the mixer um, is neat, but I mostly just go to individual tracks over here to edit. And... Um, most of these tracks, every single one of them, have to a degree an effect on them. I mostly use reverb and EQ. I use a little bit of distortion like Bit Crusher, and the only thing that that does is kind of adds a little bit of um, like almost like a video game feel. If you took the Bit Crusher off, it would sound like this. 
And if I put the Big Crusher back on, it has like a little overtone. It's very subtle, but it's something I, I like and I use it quite often. I think we should have that in the DAW as well, the one that we're working on. Um, I also think that some of these effects are very complicated and we don't need all of them. I've used all of these, or to, the, to a degree, most of them. And I don't know what a lot of them do, but a lot of them make the sounds sound very cool and I genuinely enjoy using them and I only picked up on them just by messing around with them. So the only reason I know how to use any of these special ones down here, modulation and multi effects is because I just took the time out of my day to mess around with them. But if it was all, when it was all here, when I first started, it was extremely overwhelming. I didn't know what anything did. I was confused and it didn't help me out much. So we don't need all the effects that we have here. I don't even think an iPad could run all the effects they have on this. That's why there's no um, mobile version of Logic, only GarageBand. Now up here is where you're gonna find the MIDI effects. Um, that's actually gonna manipulate the, in the input. So if I threw on an arpeggiator to this right here, so right there if i threw on an arpeggiator it would sound a lot different than how it normally sounded i'll play it first without the arpeggiator and then with the arpeggiator it goes to this it just edits the way the input is played and perceived and this chord trigger right here is going to be the auto chord feature the auto chord feature wouldn't go very well with this kind of song but the auto chord feature mostly helps out for like house tracks and for the auto chord feature that i want to incorporate with the programming of your own chords the things that you'd like um, i think it would be a game changer i think it would be very different than the average auto chord machine and I think it would um, make the general flow of things just a whole lot easier and a lot quicker um, over here we've got a whole library of sounds from logic um, and all of these use the stock logic sounds I haven't used them I use um, the stuff that I've purchased but over here everything from alchemy all the way down to the vintage Mellotron is logic stock and the drum machine designers logic stock and utility you don't really need any of these but that is also logic stock um, up here we've got the library we've got the information on the track you have we have the quick help menu which I think would be a good thing to incorporate to the app um, another thing I thought would be good is a checklist to kinda make them get into it make the the user start doing things and kind of help them jump into it help them learn how to navigate the app mixed with the quick help i think um it would be a pretty good thing to add and over here it's going to show a couple extra things i've never used any of these but this looks very interesting you could change the colors of everything too Okay, well that was new to me, so that doesn't need to be incorporated at all. I've gotten by completely fine without it. Uh, smart controls, these basically just let you edit the individual sound um, from here. But, I mean, you could open up this, you could edit the sound in any of the synths you have, and you could also just throw like EQ or reverb or anything on any of these tracks. So I don't really use it as much, I don't think we need it as much, but... It is a nice little tool sometimes. I've used it before. We got the mixer. Uh, we don't need this. The mixer is mostly for professional things. The mixer is just going to show you every track and um, it's going to be easier to copy and paste over effects if you're doing layering or um, if you're doing vocal tracks. It's just easier to get everything over. If you have presets, it just makes everything pretty quick. Uh, this right here is going to be the piano roll. As you can see, 
piano roll is pretty simple. You got the piano right here, and then whatever you click is what note it plays. And if I click down on one of these notes or just hover over it, it'll show me the pitch is F2. Um, standard is usually C3. That's where everything starts. And you got all the way up until C8, all the way down until C negative 2. And um, that is a good place to start for that on the piano roll, starting with C. That's my go-to. Um, up here, it's going to show you what beat you're at. So right now I am at 7. 0.23 now I'm at 7.2 7.4 boom we got 8 1 1 and then the more you go through it the more ticks you get and the more beats you get and that is directly correlated with the metronome and I'll play that right now just to show you let me just mute all the sounds we've got pay attention to that up there Every click on the metronome is another place on the grid that this playback thing has gone through. Um, up here, you've got the master volume. I wouldn't mess around with this. Keeping the master volume at zero, zero is important. And um, this right here is just for recording if you were to if you wanted to count down when you were recording, it gives you a little countdown. If you wanted no countdown, you could just go right for it. That is a good feature. Every time I record, I have that on because it does help me count in a little bit. Over here, we're going to have every single audio clip that we've had. We could edit these, splice them up. And then over here, we have uh, Apple Loops. Um, of course, Apple's a big company. I don't think we could be able to do this anytime soon, but they have a bunch of pre-made. They just have all these pretty unique samples that they've created already that you can use if you wanted to. They're all royalty free and you're all you're allowed to use them for everything. Um, I think that's neat. I think it's cool and I think we could incorporate it one day, but I don't think it will be a, um what's it called? I don't think it'd be achievable anytime soon. I think we got to get the app up and running first. Um, and that's about it for how I use Logic and what you can use with it. Um the thing I'd say is this is a very complicated DAW, and we're not going for that. We're going for something a little simpler, um, a little more beginner friendly. So I will work with the design and the development team to kind of let people know what we should incorporate, what we shouldn't. And um, if you have any further questions on things or you need any more clarification on anything, feel free to message me on either Slack, Instagram, anything. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you my number if you need it. And I could try to explain things to the best of my ability. If I can't explain, I'll help by finding a YouTube video or something that will help you out. And, um, yeah, I hope this helped out. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this kind of cleared some things up. And um, I'm looking forward to our meeting on Friday. I cannot wait to see everyone. I want to see what we got done. And I'm um, very impressed with the work we've got done so far. So thank you guys for taking the time to watch this. I'll see you.